Kevin here from DIYDork.com. Today I want to show you how to build a really cool coat rack using some different sizes of dowel rods, a little piece of plywood, and a couple of pieces of pipe that I found at the hardware store. So anyway, check this out. It's really inexpensive and it's pretty easy to build. Alright, let me show you the dowels I'm going to use for this coat rack. The first one here, this big one, is six feet long and it is a one and three eighths diameter. It's about the size of like a uh, closet uh, dowel rod, you know, to hang clothes on hangers and all that. Okay, the second one I'm using is a five eighths and I also have a half inch. You could use whatever size you want. I'd recommend anywhere between a three quarter inch and a half inch. Also, you don't have to have multiple sizes like I'm using. I just thought it would look a little more interesting. The main thing to do when you're buying your dowel rods, especially the big one, the big six footer, is uh, when you pick it up, I got mine at Menards, lay it on their nice smooth concrete floor and see how smooth it rolls. Make sure that it's nice and straight. This is the best one they had. There's just a very, very slight bow to it. It's almost undetectable, but this is the best one they had. But you can see on the smaller dowels, that one is fairly smooth, but look at this little tiny one here. Look how bowed it is. So. You don't want your big dowel to be like that. These small ones are going to get chopped up, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, of course, you don't want one curved, but anyway, the big dowel, you want to get the straightest one you can. So now, let me go ahead and show you the uh, parts for the base. All right, now my base here is going to be built out of three-quarter inch plywood, and this is a nice smooth sanded piece left over from when I built my stand-up desk, but you could use whatever you want. Just the smoother it is, the nicer it's going to look. All right, now when it's all finished, I'm going to put some of these little felt pads on the bottom just to keep it from scratching up the floor, but you could go without or use a different type. There's plastic ones and you know all kinds of things. All right, and then to hold the dowel to the base, I'm using a pipe flange and then a pipe nipple here. They are both one and a quarter inch diameter, and my little pipe nipple here is four inches long. Now when I got it at Menards, they had a three inch, a four inch, a five, and I think even six, but I think four inches is the perfect height to both function well and look okay, not too big or too small. So anyway, uh, now that's basically all the parts. So I'll go ahead and build this, and uh, it's a pretty cool little project, and it's not very difficult at all. Alrighty, so I'm getting the base prepared and getting that kind of drawn out and designed. There's a little skinny section over here I need to cut off, and, and cutting off a section over here so that way it'll be nice, 18 inches wide. This is a factory edge that I'm going to consider straight enough, all right? And also I come out 18 inches this way, so a big chunk back here will be cut off. All right, once I have my little 18-inch square drawn out, I went ahead and I went from diagonal to diagonal, so that way I could find center, all right? So I did this line, and then I also did it this way. That exact cross point is dead center of this piece, all right? And that's exactly where the little pipe flange will go. Now, if you look at this pipe flange, it has four holes for mounting screws, so what I did was I just took those and I shifted around until they were perfectly centered on these lines I drew. And then that's exactly where this would get mounted. And I went ahead and took my pencil and uh, just kind of drew inside the circles and that's where these come from. So now I know where dead center is. I know exactly how I'm going to mount this later. All right, so I got to do one more thing. All right, I don't want just a square base. You could do that if you want. You could even turn it into a circle, whatever you want. But I'm going to turn it into sort of like an X shape. All right, so from these center lines, what I'm going to do is measure out three inches this way and then three inches that way. So I have a nice six inch wide piece. So I'll make a couple of tick marks and then I will take my ruler and uh, draw it out and I'll show you what that looks like next. That will be the actual lines we'll cut out. All right, so now you should see the X that I've drawn here. And it's nice and squared. You can keep it that way if you want. But I want to go ahead and smooth it out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is use a tin can and just line it up against my edges and then trace around it so I get a nice, smooth finish to it. All right, so then when I go to cut this out, I'll have these nice rounded corners. I'm also going to do it to these inside corners right here too. Just line it up on the opposite side of the line and trace around it. Okay, so there we go. So now when I cut, it'll be nice and rounded here, around there, go straight, then it's going to curve there. And I'll do it to all of these, and then I'll go ahead and start cutting this out and show you what it looks like all finished up. Oh, 
Okie doke, so I ran out of light last night, but I want to show you today what it looks like after I cut it out. It's the basic shape here. A little rough around the edges, I gotta run my sander over to smooth it out, so I'll go ahead and do that next. And now check that out, real nice and smooth, rounded over edges. Looks pretty cool. I'm sure if I used a router, it'd look even nicer, but I think this looks pretty good for just using the sander. Now I did get a little too aggressive and it tore a couple little chunks out here. And if I wanted to, I could put some filler in there and uh, you know, wood filler or bondo or whatever before I go and paint it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it. I'm okay with it. But if something like that really bothered you, like I said, you could, you could fill it. So anyway, this is basically ready to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the dowels and I'll show you how to do those. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do with these dowels is I need to chop them down into the little rods that will actually hold the coats up on the post of the coat rack. So I've determined that since I have two different sizes here, I want either eight or ten pegs total. So I'll go ahead and cut enough. I'll cut five out of each one, have ten, and then I can determine later if I want the eight or ten. Also, I think I want them somewhere between about four inches. So I'll mark a couple here at four. And then some of the others, uh, probably six or seven inches. I'll probably just go ahead and go with six. I'll mark here at this 10. And then I'll go ahead and uh, mark the rest, take them outside and chop them down. And then I'll show you how I actually fit them to the post of the coat rack. Okay, so I brought all of my um, dowels I chopped down. One thing I want to do is get rid of all the frays on them. So I'm just going to take my little sanding block real quick and uh, get rid of all of them. It's important for this next step because we're going to start drilling some holes into the um, pole up here. So we don't want anything to get in our way. All right, so first things first, I'm going to take the pole and... Uh, Bring it up here, and with my tape measure, I'm going to mark it at 24 inches. All right, so this upper two feet is where all of the pegs will be mounted. So that's just a nice little, you know, mark to keep me in line later when I start drilling. Now it's time to actually start drilling. So I'm going to take one of my bigger pegs here, the 5 8 Also going to be using a 5 8 spade bit here. All right, and here's my 24 inch line. So this would be my bottom one. I don't think I'm gonna go all the way down to 24. I'll come up a couple inches. And uh, I'm not gonna put them in straight. And just a reminder, this is the top of the uh, coat rack. So anyway, I don't want them going straight. I want them to go in at a little bit of an angle. So they're kind of angled up like a tree branch or something like that. All right, so whenever I drill, I'm gonna have to drill at an angle. Now another thing I wanna do whenever I actually start using a drill is if you're looking at it dead on, you wanna make sure that your drill bit is in line with the post. So even though it will be angled, it will be in line. I don't want it kind of twisted like that because you could accidentally, you know, go through the edge. But if you look at this drill bit, I mean, it's a good quarter or a third of the width of the, the board. So, you know what I mean? You want it nice and straight. You don't want to be going in tilted. So I'll go ahead and drill this first one. It's really just kind of winging it. And I mean, I'm not going with any precise angle or anything like that. Just whatever I think looks good. So let me do the first one and I'll show you how to kind of start test fitting as you're drilling. All right, can you see what's happening here as I'm drilling? It's starting to go at an angle and the spade's only hitting here. It'll get a little wild on you, so you gotta be a little careful, but we need to go way deeper than that. Right, starting to get somewhere. I think my spade bit's a little dull, it's starting to burn. But you can see we're getting a little deeper. Now another thing you, I probably should have mentioned is that as you're going, you don't want to start wobbling around and wallow it out. Because you want to make sure that it is an exact fit for this. That's so nice and tight once it goes in. So it needs to go in a little further. This is where you keep testing. All right, I definitely need a, a new blade here, or a new drill bit. It's burning, but I think I can make it work. All right, so I got it where it will not hold in, but that's still not deep enough. I mean, this very end is 
barely in a quarter inch, so I need to go further. I also want to make sure to be careful not to go too far, but it'll be kind of hard to do in this, so let's keep on going. Ooh, smoking. All right, you can see here, it's a little deeper, probably about a half inch in now, and uh, it's got a little, little bit of play. That's why I want to go in deeper. It won't really wobble like that too much anymore, so keep on going. All right, can you see how deep that is? It's Kind of burnt in there so you can't really tell but I'll go ahead and test this out. It looks like it might be pretty good. A little bit of wobble still but once it's put in there for good with glue it should be pretty strong. I think I'm going to go just a little bit deeper. Alright let's test this out. There we go. That's a good fit now. I mean that's not going to come out and it'll fit a lot tighter once we glue it in so there's one and uh, I'm going to add either a total of eight or ten I haven't decided yet now another thing because that drilled in so deep I would not recommend putting another one in right next to it you need to come up a level okay so each one will kind of be on its own level also I mean I guess you could kind of have them in line if you wanted but I'm just going to put them in randomly and I'm also going to swap it up between the uh, fat ones and the skinny ones and just kind of go up through there. So it takes a little bit of time to drill and you want to keep test fitting. Make sure it's a nice good fit. It's not crooked or anything like that. And then uh, once it's good to go and we assemble it, we use some glue to hold it in tighter. So anyway, there you go. That's how you drill. So I'll just show you what they all look like once they're all mounted in there.